This is for the people who just want to show me how to do it, don't explain anything. I made a different video where I explain a lot more. This one's just going to show you how to do this. So Jamovi is a an open source, which means it's free, statistical software analysis program. You can go to jamovi.org and download it off their website. And you can do a lot more than regression, linear regression analyses, but I'm just going to show you how to do that. So I open Jamovi on my computer and go here to those three little lines and I can open a data set that I already have on my computer. I need to browse to it on this PC. I'm going to use this data set that I made up. This is fake data, but I made it so it'll illustrate things. I've got height and weight, height in inches, weight in pounds, average calorie consumption, and gender. And notice the little icons up here. It's a little ruler beside it if it's numbers, and the circles if it's a, and the letter A to indicate that it's a variable that is described by a word, it's a category. Now I want to do a linear regression. So I go on the menu here to regression and choose linear regression. And what it does, it opens up here a bunch of different things that you can do. See these are pull down menus. And up here it's got my variables, height and inches, weight, calories, and gender. The dependent variable is what you want to predict from the other variables or from some of the other variables. And what we want to predict is weight. We don't want to predict somebody's height by their weight, although I guess we could, but or we don't want to predict their gender by their height. <laughs> what we want to do is predict weight if we know some of these other variables. So the dependent variable is the outcome that you're trying to predict. So we put weight over here. And now covariates are your independent variables. Factors are categories that like gender would be a factor. Now to do this, we can start with, we can put everything in here if we wanted to, um, but let's start with gender, the simplest thing of all, and see if the weights are different in general for the two genders. So when we put gender in, as, and we have to put it down here because it's a factor, and see that little picture here matches the picture there. And so what this gives us, the model fit measures, R squared, that's, here's R, and you square it and you get this. R squared tells us how much variance in weight is, can be attributed to the genders. And so down here on the model coefficients, male minus female is 45. So that's the difference in the average weights of the males and females. And that's pretty significant. In fact, it's statistically significant because the p-value here is 0.01. So 43%, we round that up, 43% of the difference in weight can be explained by gender. Now what happens if we add height in to the model. Now we are explaining 84% of the difference in weight, 84% of the variance in weight can be explained by this model that has both gender and height. And let's go ahead and put calories in. That's the average amount of calories the person eats in a day. Now we are explaining almost 87% of the variance in weight. And what we have here, these are the model coefficients. Now we want more information than what this gives us. This is a multilinear regression analysis because we have more than one variable. We can go to the model builder and we get better information by using blocks. Let's take the block one to only have gender in it. So this is where we started out. 43% is explained by gender. And let's add a block. And this just lets us see things in steps. We add calories and see when we add calories in, we now are up to 49, almost 50% of the variance from 43 is now explained now that we have added 
the amount of calories that you eat. And then here the model comparisons shows us that the change in R squared, the change in the variance, you could get that by subtracting, but you don't need to subtract because they tell you the change in the variance is 0.06, and that is statistically significant. And the estimates on the coefficients change down here. Let's add another block and put height in the model. See, this gives us the same information. It's just that we're able to look at it in a way that we can tell how much things changed. When we add in height, we are up to almost 87% of the variance in weight is now explained by all three of these variables in the model. So with gender, now the difference is in the means is 10.8 because it's comparing the means when you've got the same height and the same calorie intake. So it's not as big as it was when it was just all the girls versus all the boys. And all of these things are statistically significant. Sometimes your gender, although it was significant in the beginning, it might have not been significant when we added more variables. But in this case, this was. And so you could little pull down menu here. You can flip through and you can look at your different models. It's just a better way to look at things. Uh, reference levels, we don't, uh, we have female. Assumption checks, you want to do your assumption checks. Um, let's look at the residuals. Oh, that's not good. Oh, well, I made this data up. This is fake data, and I used formulas to make sure that I would get something that was worth looking at, or that would illustrate something. So I don't want to look at the assumption checks because it, the data probably has autocorrelation stuff because, I, like I said, I met it with formulas. Um, but check these things out and Google them so that you'll know how to interpret them. And then under Save, this is just an interesting, and you should get these. You can get your predicted values, your residuals, and Cook's distance. Cook's distance tells you what, how many outliers you have. Like for each data point, it tells you how much weight that data point gave to the model. And outliers are going to give a lot more weight. So if you have big numbers for Cook's distance, you maybe should not be using this model. Your residuals are the differences between what's predicted and what's observed. And of course, your predicted values are what the model predicts. So let's see, can we see our data? Here's our data. And it adds these to your data set, the predicted. And when you see, you can save this, these are for your different models, what's predicted. These are your residuals. And you see our, that, that's just the, that's probably the average weight for the females. And when we add in the other variables, you get a much better prediction. These are the, the good predictions. And the residuals. Cook's distances are all small, which is good. It means we don't have a lot of outliers. And you've got statistical significance for all of these things. And that is how you do a regression analysis using Jamovi. Very easy to use.